Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. A few days ago, I posted a video showing my preliminary results of trying to reverse engineer the interface for the inverter out of a Panasonic microwave. Um, at that point, I had deduced most of what was necessary to use the thing for other purposes, and now I've pretty much completed that task, and what you're looking at here is the completed result of that project. This is a general purpose high voltage power supply that's good for a lot of different things. I intend on using it for a vacuum tube Tesla coil and possibly a ham radio amplifier eventually. Um, you could use it for all kinds of different projects. Uh, what I'm going to show you here is what I ended up doing to package this inverter into a complete device and what little tips and tricks you probably ought to know before you do it yourself to save you some of the same problems that I had. So, what you see here is that this is the same inverter board that I showed you in the previous video. Um, I have a couple modifications that I've made to it. First and foremost, I reconfigured the diodes on the output. So, these two diodes here uh, are now in parallel with each other. They used to form a voltage doubler with these capacitors. That's no longer the case. I reconfigured these two capacitors to be filters across the output. Um, and then I added a stack of 1 kilovolt, 100,000 picofarad uh, ceramic disks for some additional filtering. And between those three capacitor units there, this thing has some pretty good filtration on the output, and it's fairly smooth considering the 36 kilohertz switching frequency. Um, just have a little RF choke on the output here, the right bead, and uh, that's about that. Um, there weren't any other modifications to the actual circuit itself. The only other thing that I did on the board is I remounted the two power semiconductor devices. Back there towards the back, you can see the bridge rectifier for the mains input. Uh, I just mounted that directly to the back of the case by drilling a hole through and mounting the original heat sink on the outside. Um, that's an isolated case device, so there's really no difficulty doing that at all. The other device here is the switching device. That's a high voltage, high current IGBT. That one uh, has a little problem associated with it. Um, it's not an isolated case, and it is not isolated from the heat sink in the original installation. There's uh, no thermal pad, nothing. So the heat sink floats at the collector potential of the IGBT. The collector potential is rectified line voltage at the least and spikes up to 600 to 1,000 volts while the power supply is operating. That's a lot and that's quite a bit more than most um, semiconductor insulator pads were intended for. Um, <clears throat> when I first installed this, it arced across the insulator pad, the mica pad, uh, between the collector and the case. Uh, that was partly because I used arctic silver as the thermal uh, transfer medium, which seemed to be non-conductive according to my multimeter, but apparently at 600 to 1,000 volts, it is conductive. So use a good insulating thermal paste electrically insulating. Uh, this is a ceramic filled paste and it seems to work just fine. I haven't had any problems since. Um, just be careful with that and note that it's a potential problem. You can see here I have the pulse width modulator board right here which I made and I described in my previous video although I didn't show it to you. It's based on a uh, 556 timer although you can use a 555. I'm only using half of it but it's what I had sitting around and it just produces a pulse train that ends up on this yellow wire here uh, and controls the output of the inverter. This guy right here is a 5 volt power supply which I ripped out of some old thing, I don't even know what, uh, and it just provides power for the pulse width modulator because there's no easy way to get a DC voltage that's line isolated out of the inverter board. Everything on there floats at line potential, so I uh, just have to have a separate power supply for your pulse width modulation. Um, up here on top, I have a neon indicator that indicates when power is on. Got the power control um, with a little mark indicating the lowest setting at which the inverter will start. Uh, in a finished product, of course, you could use um, little trimmer resistors on the pulse width modulator to set the endpoints for this, and that would probably be better, but this is what I did. Uh, and then I've got this uh, safety cover over the power switch, which is insulated and allows easy turn off without contacting the case. Um, just in case. Uh, appropriate warning signs because this thing really, really, really um, requires caution. It's a, a very dangerous piece of equipment. Um, doesn't really get a whole lot more dangerous than this in a home lab, actually. Uh, seems to perform quite well. Um, 
get about 2.2 kilovolts under load out and about 4.2 open circuit. Uh, it is a constant power controller with an upper limit on current based on the set point. Haven't figured out exactly how that algorithm works, but it doesn't really matter for most purposes. You just set the power and go with it and understand that you're going to get uh, open circuit voltage until your load draws um, enough current to, to make up whatever the power setting is. And uh, then the pulse width modulator will start to limit the output to keep it at that set level. Um, so you can sort of use the power control as almost like a, a safety feature to protect your device from uh, overloads on the secondary. Um, probably want a safer connector than this eventually. But whatever this goes into, I'm sure uh, in my application will be completely enclosed and isolated, and that's where I'll provide the safety. The high voltage return is directly through the case. So when I reassemble it, I just have this um, grounded wire that goes onto the case screw right here, and that's where the high voltage return connects. Um, there you have it. So you now have all the information you need to use a Panasonic microwave inverter for whatever high voltage projects you um, feel a need to try out. Just be careful. Uh, treat this thing just like a distribution transformer or a heavy-duty plate transformer from an old radio because it is uh, that powerful and that dangerous even though it fits in the palm of your hand. Um, this is certainly the wave of the future and it replaces almost every application that an old-fashioned microwave oven transformer would be used for. Have fun.